we have all the drywall finished in here. Now we're putting up our concrete backer board around the tub. It's the best stuff to use behind ceramic tile. Now what this material is, is a half inch piece of concrete with fiberglass mesh on either side. Now to cut this stuff, you use a special blade with a carbide tip on them. You just score it. And it's like working with, uh, like working with drywall. Once you have it scored, you snap it. And then using a razor knife, I just cut up the back of the uh, rest of the fiberglass. Okay. As I mentioned, just like, just like drywall. Set that over there. And I could use a quick hand to get this thing All up right. there. You got it there? Got it. Okay, now to secure this, we'll be using inch and three quarter galvanized roofing mail. You place the nails every six to eight inches along each stud. And then when you're all done, you go back and reinforce the joints with thin set mortar and fiberglass tape. A thin set is a special mortar that's used for setting tile, usually floor tile. Uh, it comes in a powder form, and you mix it to the consistency of, uh, well, mud. Then you push it into the joint with a six inch drywall taping knife. Then you push the fiberglass tape into the mortar. Like so. There we go. And then we use our taping knife to embed it. board costs about $13 or $14 for a 3 by 5 sheet. And then expect to pay another $15 or $20 for mortar and tape. Now probably the number one mistake that do-it-yourselfers make is they don't prepare the framing. This backer board will not flatten out a crooked wall. So if you have any undulations in the framing, you want to use these little felt furring strips to help straighten everything out. Otherwise it's going to end up looking like sloppy tile work. All right, well, we're onto the tile. And we're starting with the tub surround. Now, there's three different types of tub configurations that you might be working with. This is the alcove or the recess. It's the most common. Now, there's also the drop-in or the uh, freestanding. Okay, I'm all set for those. Now, an alcove like this, many times it will also double as a shower-tub combination, in which case you need all three walls covered in ceramic tile is the most common material to do this with. Now the way this works is the adhesive is fairly sticky and the tiles don't weigh that much so we simply press the adhesive or the tiles onto the adhesive and they pretty much just hang on the side of the wall. Now we're using 6x6 six six tiles. 4x4 four four tiles are also a real common size to use in a bath surround like this. Now the way the spacing works, I don't know if you can uh, see this or not, but there's little lugs on the edge of the tile. What I do is place one tile up against the next and those little lugs perform the spacing function for us. So we don't have to worry about keeping the tiles apart a certain distance. You can see the spacing ends up being really uniform. I'll get these things in the, exactly the right spot. Now once we get all the full tiles laid up in a section, and we'll go back and measure for the ones that we have to cut. Okay, it looks like three and an eighth ought to work. Okay. And once you do have a section like this laid up, go back and wipe off any excess adhesive. Now's a real good time to catch it. Also, if you have any adhesive in the cracks, pull that out with a, uh, with a utility knife. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get out in those areas. A lot of your cuts can be made on a snapper like this. It's got a little wheel that runs along the surface and scores a line in the top. And then this little lever just snaps the tile apart. There we go. Now, even though the cuts are pretty clean, it's a good idea to use a rub stone to smooth it out. There you go. Now, whenever you're dealing with cut tile, you want to make sure that the cut side of the tile is up against the wall, not up against the side of the, the finished 
tile that you laid previous to that. And with a tub surround, you always want to start with the back wall and then do the sides. That way the joints in the corners look better. Well, once you're done setting tile, you need to apply grout to the joints. Grout for wall tile is usually pretty fine since the joints between wall tile are usually thin. You use this padded float to push it around the surface and push it down into the joints. Once you've got an area done, you hold the float at about a 90 degree angle to the wall and scrape off the surface. Make sure you scrape diagonally across the tiles so that the edge of the float doesn't dig into the joints. Then wipe it with a damp sponge. Clean off the excess grout and shape the grout in the joints. You want to be rinsing out your sponge pretty often so that you're not leaving much residue on the surface. The final wipe should be with a freshly rinsed sponge. One wipe, turn it over, one more wipe, then rinse it again. This tile project cost about $300, including materials and tool rental, and took about three days. An alternative to a tile tub surround is one made of plastic or fiberglass. Here's the steps to installing one of those. Most surrounds come in three or five oh, pieces. Yeah. The first job is cutting holes in the piece that goes over the wall with the plumbing. Well, the best way to do this is to make a template out of cardboard. Okay. Depending on the size of the openings you need, you can use a hole saw or a jigsaw. Use one of the adhesives recommended by the manufacturer. For this brand, we spread the adhesive out with a notched trowel just like you do with vinyl flooring or ceramic tile. It's also a good idea to put caulk along the edge of the tub before you set the panels in. For this brand, the panels for the plumbing wall and the head wall go in first. Then you trim the center panel to fit between them. On some kits, the panels will merely overlap at the corners. This brand, though, has an interlocking corner that seems like it should be pretty watertight. Nonetheless, it's recommended that you put caulk into the channel before installing the back right, panel. Let me, let me pop this out. Let's, let's pull it up toward me a little bit. It's a good idea to brace the panels in place overnight while the adhesive cures. Once it's dry, we'll go back and caulk the joint between the tub and the panels.